Hello everyone, welcome back to Rule Thirds. It's been a while, but uh, we're glad to be back with another fantastic episode of the Rule Thirds podcast for you all. My name is Larry. My name is Sean. And my name is Max. Excellent. And uh, we're just going to jump right into it because I'm sure we all have a lot to say. Um, Today's episode is a review of the latest James Bond outing, uh, Spectre. Uh, Specifically Sam Mendes' second one, I believe. And uh, the fourth um, Daniel Craig outing uh, supposedly not the last but now people are saying it's the last it's it's yeah. a bit confused it's a bit i don't know confused. i hear his contract said five but craig doesn't right, want to do then, anymore but then i heard something that it was actually not five it's it's kind yeah, of it's it yeah well we'll hope based on specter's success and craig himself we'll see Wait, if it are goes you further. telling me that the legal stuff behind the james bond franchise is complicated and weird yeah. no way look at guys this franchise has a history of being weird with the paperwork Mm-hmm. Um, so, but just before I forget, Larry, may I remind you we need to do a community segment? Oh, right. Uh, okay. okay. Good. Yes, community okay. segment. Well, uh, uh, Seth, our good buddy Seth, uh, he responded to last week's question, which uh, Max was very, very creative. Uh, and he asked uh, what uh, – I think he said moment or moments uh, would you like make into a movie, right? Wasn't that the – Like what, what – if Aaron Sorkin came to you and was like, I want to take a moment in your life and turn it into a screenplay, what would that moment be? Yes, much like how he took three – Kind of extended moments and some flashbacks, basically extended moments of Steve Jobs' life and made a movie out of it. That was the last review. You can go check it out. Uh, but Seth responded with last week, which was actually a while ago because, you know, we took a while with this one. Uh, last week when I digitized all my mom's camcorder tapes. I thought that was a very interesting answer. Because um, it's okay. uh, something I've wanted to do for a while because I did make a ton of, like, home videos on a little camcorder. And they're kind of just fading. I don't really know where they are, but I know they're fading and I would love if I could get, like, permanent digital versions of them so i don't lose them because uh they're fun uh and then Whit- whitley says that steve jobs was inter- interesting and well made but something felt off when it came to the lead and i i, I disagree but that that's what whitley says i thought that was the strongest part and i think we all kind of agreed on that it was fast but well, it was definitely it was the strongest part of the cast yeah. for sure uh, i'm in the middle i guess but that's whatever there you go uh, the best line was because artists make things and hacks hacks ask for a show of hands it was a good line Good line. It's very quotable. I agree. Very Sorkin. And uh, he says, as for the question, he says that perhaps the lead up to my tour reading or recording an Infinite Rainy Day podcast episode, both would lend themselves to some great fictionalized exchanges. That was his answer ah. to the moments in life. I have no idea what that podcast is, though. Hmm. So I don't know. That. I believe, I believe it's the, a blog that he writes for. I believe it has to be. Yeah, Infinite Rainy Day. What is yeah. the Torah? To- what's that? What is that? The t- <laughs> <laughs> is don't it, do this, it? Sean. You get it? Uh, I'm a funny. So uh, that's our community so, segment. So funny. It's funny because I was confused about one thing and now the other. Good stuff. Hmm. Anyway, so let's get into uh, Spectre because uh, surprisingly enough, uh, it's the critical reception is not what we originally expected. Um, no, it's a bit mixed. Yes, and I feel that – and I have a, a feeling, just an inkling that that might be well represented in this trio – uh, mm-hmm. So I am going to once again repeat that we have a little system. We give many theses. theses. Um, for this movie specifically, I guess we will avoid spoilers because there is quite a bit to spoil. Sure. Um, and we will we will do that. And then towards the end, you'll hear us put up a uh, put up our red tape, and we'll talk about some of the spoilers. Yeah, but you can stick around there because we do non spoiler for a while. That's Absolutely. The point, so yes. Uh, so, because the host never goes first, I'm going to ask Max for his opinion of Spectre. Okay. So, could someone please explain to me what happened here? How the largely the same creative team behind the excellent Skyfall managed to screw up the sequel this badly? Mm. I, I it, Spectre is not even that bad of a film, but the things it does so wrong are so irritating to me that it, it kind of drowns out all the good, or most of the good. It's passable, I guess, but the little things it does to try and drag down the good movies that came before it just irritate me beyond no end. I I did not like Spectre. I was I don't know if I was disappointed, but I was I was I was kind of shocked at how the, again, largely the same creative team that gave us the Dark Knight James Bond edition gave <laughs> us this weird attempt at uh, movies bad, four point five. And there you go, Sean. Um, Spectre bored me. J- James Bond bored me. That's new. That's something that 
should physically not be possible. But Spectre just isn't interesting. It doesn't raise any questions that I didn't know the answer to or that I cared about. The character interactions were off. They felt flat. Side plots just kind of happened. Didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't get an overall theme. The villain wasn't used much. And they just made some, like Max mentioned, some shockingly atrocious decisions in terms of franchise building that we'll get to in the spoiler section, but just stunningly awful in terms of some decisions made that really put the icing on the cake in terms of just a disappointing, unpleasant movie that I actively dislike. Not even indifferent, I actively dislike. And I have a hard time thinking of something good, honestly, to say about it. So I'm actually going to give it a 3.5 out of 10. It's a pretty bad movie. It's Woof. A, yeah. Woof. Um, my turn. Um, okay. So uh, technically... Uh, technical standpoints i'm talking specifically cinematography editing and stuff specter is fine that that stuff is out of the way because i wanted to shove that out of the way right in the beginning because i don't care about that stuff anymore um specter is a failure uh in so many ways uh, especially in storytelling storytelling not only wor- world building wise but individual movie wise it's i can't i, I really want to mirror your guys' opinions because they- yeah it seems like we're all on the same page yeah, yeah i'm, I'm kind of just- surprised i thought one of us would be more positive no, it's I mean and there is there's stuff to like in my opinion there is stuff to like about Spectre uh, which we'll get into but there's just so much to actively dislike. Yeah. Uh and it really disappoints me because this is another example of a film that tries to take shortcuts in making this deeper more f- um universe idea in a franchise <laughs> and it takes shortcuts and it sucks because of it. Uh so I'm going to give Spectre a 4 out of 10. It's it's really weak, and uh, I was thoroughly disappointed. Are you especially. kidding me? Am I the most positive out of the three of us? Well, to be fair, I was between three point five and four That's because t- most of it I was it just four point five. Well, yeah, so yeah, you were the most positive, but I, I'm wondering why. I did, let's see, I can't really. <sighs> well, okay. Right. So before we get into all the really bad stuff, I would like to just spotlight just a couple of things that I that Spoiler I territory, that I right? like. Oh, no, 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 not yet, no. not yet. Oh, okay. We're going to stay off spoilers, and we're going to get to those later, because there's a lot to say. Um, but Let's I start with whatever positives we can think of. Yes, I want to spotlight a couple of positive things, because there are some positive things about the movie, at least in my opinion. I think the cinematography is pretty good. I think there's some good shots here and there. Um, I think... See, here's, here's where I have, to, I, have to, I, have to, I have to be negative right away. I don't think it was a good-looking movie. Oh, I, I disagree think, there. I think like the compositions kind of were good, but yeah, it felt brown. It felt gray. It it did not pop. Just like it just, it just didn't have a life. Skyfall oh, was gorgeous. And, and, let me just say there are going to be a lot of comparisons to Skyfall because again, this is largely the same creative yeah, team. It's, it's a lot of the same people behind it. I don't think that's an unfair thing. But even without comparing, I thought it was a dull looking movie. Yeah, uh, it, it was brown and gray too much. It just I don't think it looked good. It did not have a good color palette, and that really I, threw me off. Can I say? Um, I didn't think the pacing was too bad. I don't know. Was oh, it, I think know? it. I think it was. I thought it was. I, I didn't. I just. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I we'll let Sean. Okay Sean takes pace, a backseat. There's no reason that this. What? Sean's gonna take a backseat for this section, I guess. Well, no, oh, I mean, yeah. I will raise my thing, but I want Max to I do mean, his, his first. I'm not saying it had great pacing, but I mean, it, it went at an okay pace, I guess. I mean, for two for a two and a half hour movie, I don't think it, I don't think it bored me. As much as I thought it would, it. I mean, like while was, like halfway, in, I'm like, I don't like this, but I'm not bored. So yeah, I wouldn't whatever. say I was bored. Yeah, you know, I what? that's just... I think the thing that's making this like mine the most positive because I wasn't so much bored as I was just like, I was more concerned with what the heck am I watching going on right in front of me. So I guess it doesn't qualify. Yeah, this movie did not bore me. That's that's yeah, what I'll say. I'll agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> that's how I Personally. led my thesis statement. So yeah, clearly well, that's I, I'm why... on a different opinion. It it did bore me. Well, and I I mean, mean, besides for that, just a couple other things. I think there's one really, really great action scene, uh, and that's the one on the train with Batista. Love that sequence. One of my uh, my easily honestly, I like the opening, but the but that sequence, in my opinion, was just a ton of fun to watch. Was 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 he supposed to be like the new Jaws? Is that is that his thing? Kinda. He was the goon of the movie. And what's so uh, weird is that it. Like, I saw, like, these interviews with Dave Bautista talking about his character and, like, it was going to be a more human character than previous Bond films. Like, what <laughs> is he talking about? Fists that he fists. He says a character. nothing. He I'm says sorry. one line. He, there was he just one character. line. And we can't say it because it's yeah. explicit. But, yeah, um, it's one line. 
Yeah. I just, and, uh, I don't get it. Stop hyping up a non-existent role. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Maybe uh, he's still running off his Drax high? And was I the only uh, one that, like, the, okay, uh, specifically Max, because obviously I know Larry's opinion, did it feel, like, quiet to you, that train sequence? And, in fact, most of the action just felt kind of empty. Maybe it was the lack of, like, music in that scene, but it felt awkward. It felt oh, clumsy. I know what they were trying to do, and I don't think they did it well. It's kind of like what happened with Mission Impossible uh, Rogue Nation, which, like, there was no music. It was just supposed to be just, like, action. Like, action kind of standing by itself. But, uh, but unlike Rogue Nation, it didn't really work here. It did feel kind of boring and, yeah, quiet. I was more concerned with one of the characters, like, wh- we'll get to this later, but one of the characters I was paying close attention to how the movie treated this character, and it was not ideal. So I guess I wasn't paying attention to that personally, but yeah, from what I, I heard, just... yeah, it was pretty quiet. It was I, I respect where it was going, but I don't think it it went well. And again, the opening, like, you know, can we just talk about the action a little bit? Because we're kind of transitioning well, there anyway. I just, well, I kind of just wanted to bring up one other thing. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that I like the score. I think it fits perfectly well within a Bond sort of film. I think yeah. a lot of it's pretty cool. I don't remember it that one. Newman that might be one of my cool. positives. This did not sound like a Thomas Newman soundtrack, and that's actually like a it good thing It sounded like me. a Bond soundtrack, at least in yeah. my opinion. Really I, I, sly, I really smooth. I don't I remember like any of it. I won't go, okay, I won't go into this, but like Thomas Newman, I think, is a great composer, but one of the things he does is like, his scores sound very similar. If you listen to Saving Mr. Banks and listen to Finding Nemo, they they sound like eerily similar, and you, and you hear that in other stuff too. This did not seem like this did not sound like Thomas Newman, and I, and though I appreciate his style a whole lot, I'm glad that it didn't. Like he wasn't just kind of going back to that. I'll, I'll say that I like the score, and I, I I I heard it. I was like, this does not sound like Thomas Newman, and I'm okay with that. It sounds distinct. Cool. Yeah, and also Sam Smith's song I do also like that uh, that little credit not. sequence. Okay. Are, I liked it listen, quite a bit. I'm, okay. Okay, spoiler, I'm going to thrash the opening, but I like the song. The oh, song I, was solid. Like the, the, the title sequence was cool, but not like that uh, bad, much more memorable than the others. It was, like it kind of fell Are we going to do this right now, or should we just yeah, focus no, on what we like? Do it. Okay, let's, let's get Max, negative. Let's going to do it. All right, opening sequence is so comically stupid. I don't know <laughs> how they managed to screw this up. The moment I was sitting with a bunch of my friends, the moment we see shirtless or i guess maybe naked james bond being like covered by women like it was it was like you see this in other openings to james bond movies but they're never quite this like lousy and lazy and frankly like and the weird kind of, cgi squid yeah. thingy and like let's talk about all the tentacle stuff going on let's let's not forget about that and like again i like the song i think it's a solid song but the sequence was really bad like the worst, it, it's easily the worst of all the Daniel Craig James Bond movies. Like, um, Another Way to Die is good. Skyfall, yeah. obviously, is a classic. Um, you Know My Name is good. You Know My good. Name. Like, it's solid. Yeah. It's rocking. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. And actually ties in with the big point that I didn't talk about. Uh, I'll talk about it later. But yeah, the opening sequence I thought was stupid, stupid, stupid. I was like, oh, is this what I'm in for? Okay. <laughs> uh, disagree. Oh, no. It's going to be I, that I, kind I kinda, of movie. I kind of actively disagree. I kind of thought it was symbolic. A lot of it. Oh, I kind of like some cold. of the symbolic, I think it was symbolic imagery going, but I don't think it was very subtle. <laughs> like Skyfall was subtle. What is that? Like that, uh, that, that kind of stuff. I liked it. Yeah, but, there was some good graveyard imagery. There was like the water. Like I get the Skyfall thing was more subtle. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I like. I liked it. I thought the graphics were cool. And I think didn't Show Spectre me. kind of like didn't the opening sequence kind of spoil like one of the twists in Spectre when we saw the title uh, screen? I won't say it exactly bit. until well, we get uh, spoiled uh, territory. I, I'll mention it later. I just. Do you know what I'm talking about, guys? Am I crazy? I Wait, think you're a little crazy. When oh, the actually, title is like sort of phasing out, except we see the one letter in the middle, and it's like, oh, like that's. Uh, I'll talk about this later. This is too vague to talk about in non-spoiler territory. Never mind. Okay. 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 Um, so I guess since Sean brought it up, we'll talk about the action a little bit because I have the least to say about that. Um, I just thought a lot of the scenes were just kind of boring. Yeah. Uh, the action scenes, especially that car chase. What happened in that car chase? It was just cars driving. Yeah, that Basically. was just weirdly s- s- pulseless, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, shot of shot of Bond driving, shot of Batista driving, shot, shot of, of the cool snow mountain that they were driving around, another shot of the car, another yeah. shot of James Bond, you know? Sh- shot of him talking to Money Penny on the phone. Like, yeah, like, it was nothing, no, no pops, you know? Yeah, nothing really interesting. Yeah. Which is why I love that Batista sequence, because there's a lot of hand-to-hand combat, and I think the end of it is r- hilarious. Um, I, it was the standout for me. I, 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 we already shared our thoughts on that, but what about right. the opening? The 
the the helicopter set piece. That was yes. okay. I, I like what they were doing with that because it wasn't like hugely climactic. It was like a helicopter over a city. That's not too crazy. Like in Skyfall, when it was like right. train and then somebody died, it was like all that stuff. This I kind of liked it because it was something I don't think I've seen before in an action movie. Personally, pretty sure it's been done before, but I I think it was okay. You know, I didn't like. I don't have any problems with it. I guess. Yeah, I like I like the opening. I just like the whole setup. You know. Day of the Dead, you got the you got the wall breakdown, the whole thing where like the bomb explodes and you know yeah. the wall crumbles, it's, uh, the floor crumbles. Excuse me, it's pretty, it's good, it's solid James Bond stuff. But I, I guess just my problem was that it kind of, it, it was kind of there was okay when I watched the trailer and it showed that shot for the first time, you know the far one where the helicopter goes up and mm-hmm. spins mm-hmm. upside down. That yeah. got a reaction like whoa. But then actually seeing the scene, it, it didn't go too far beyond that one moment. And I already lived that moment. And it, I don't think that's just like, well, you can't judge me based on the trailers. But that's not really that big of a high point. you know. Mm-hmm. Nor is it a consistently exciting action scene if just that one moment is what sticks out. So I don't know about the opening sequ- that opening set piece. It wasn't that great. Like, and and the, the plane going down the mountain set piece was fine. But again, it just felt un, unexciting. It felt... <sighs> Going through the numbers, I guess, you know? It wasn't mm-hmm. inspired. It just kind of happened. Yep. Sadly. Yeah, we're all just kind of bummed out now. <laughs> at least yeah. that's where I'm at. Can I... Okay, you know what? Since we're right here, can I just go over, like, one of my big issues that's not that's not spoilery? Can yeah. You do that? Yeah, sure. We're kind of off action, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... In my thesis, I ask, what happened here? And I think over the, as the week has progressed, I saw this last weekend at the time of this recording, and I think I know why, and I found out a little bit about the, the production of this movie. This movie is trying to be classic Bond in the worst way. Yeah, why I got that people vibe like sometimes. the Daniel Craig James Bond because it was different, it was interesting, it was unique, it was an interesting, I guess, grittier take. Here, it's like they're trying to take that grittiness and incorporate it into the silly, like. Enjoyable, very enjoyable, James Bond of the 60s, 70s, and I guess 80s, and it doesn't gel. That's why people like Daniel Craig, because it wasn't classic Bond. It was interesting, it was new. So when you try to put these two things, one of which was designed to not be the other thing, you're not going to get something good. Like, there are so many instances like of this weird comedy that, though there was comedy in like Skyfall and... Casino Royale, it was not as like yep. strangely blatant. It was we can, all of this. We can, uh, just as an example, because we can spoil something a bit at the very beginning, when the building collapses and Bond falls in the like, caved-in building, he lands on a couch. Yeah, it's womp, like... Womp. Womp. That does not fit. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. the first <sighs> movie with the torture and the poisoning and the death and the self-drowning in an elevator? I mean, come on! What was that? That doesn't fit. And, and that's the problem. It, it, Skyfall did that. And I, I know it's not fair to judge on the movie, but this team did the great mix of old school and new Bond. It was Skyfall. Well, yeah, I mean, you had but, the tricked out car. You had the over the top villain. But it didn't ruin the serious nature. It didn't overshadow a legitimate drama, which this did. Spectre so maybe did. perhaps Skyfall and Spectre are of two different universes where you had to try to infuse classic Bond with Daniel Craig Bond, and, have, and the result is either awesome. Or not, but I think Skyfall was like really trying to be like incorporate very surface level James Bond elements, like certain right. characters, it, it, and like it did and, not go overboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it never did. Spectre is like trying to fuse these two things together, and it's like, it's like, let's see, it's not chocolate and peanut butter; it's uh, oil and um, uh, sugar. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay, or uh, oil and water. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, that works too. Yeah, well, just that like would, it, be more scientifically overthinking accurate. it a little bit. <laughs> My big problem is that it's not having an identity crisis. It's like pretending to be something it's not. Yeah, it's and, not having an identity crisis. It has the wrong identity. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem yeah. here. I'd go with that. It's, it's not, just it's kind not of unsure off. what it's trying to be. It's trying to be so many things, and it fails at all of them. Yeah, yeah. It just it felt off a lot of it. Just sort of like, um, hmm, this is not engaging drama. Yeah, you know, and, and I You're think just sitting there, just going, not not working, guy. Not, yeah, not working. And you know what really surprised me? What like really, really surprised me about this movie is Daniel Craig himself. Am I the only one that thinks that Craig was just sort of 
going through the motions here. F- falling it in? Yeah. yeah. Like, no, nice. like, there yeah, was in, nothing. In a sense, yes. Yeah, yes. there was nothing about Craig in this film that, in my opinion, like, not... His jokes, slight chuckle, but his delivery just felt, like, so cold. It, It's kind of a problem where I like Daniel Craig's James Bond. Yeah. But this was the first Bond movie that I didn't really actually feel a change and we can get to what they pretended was the change at the end with the spoiler section and how it was totally not built up and was really stupid but absolutely again, we'll yep. get to that but it, he didn't i didn't feel like he was doing anything in the movie he was just being craig bond where Cinderella had a big craig change bond. even quantum had you kind of the you know getting over the revenge thing and skyfall I mean, it had a lot of daniel craig absolutely bond, it was a fascinating exploration of the james bond character Mm-hmm. This and one you know didn't. What? He felt like he was just kind of coasting as his Bond, not but, not advancing. And maybe or that's the big flaw with Daniel Craig's Bond is that he needs he needs like yeah. we need to engage with him in order he to needs like conflict. enjoy him. He you needs guys, a conflict. You guys went out of your way to say, you know what, this Bond will be f- focused on character development and relationships and drama. The other Bond movies did their like episodic thing where it was Bond as Bond always is doing his thing, pew pew, bad guy dies right off into the sunset, right? That was the old Bond. But these Bond movies have made a huge point in big character stuff, you know? Yeah. This isn't like the other Bonds. If this plot was in an old Bond, I wouldn't think much of it. And mm-hmm. what's funny is that the filmmakers might take that as a compliment. I don't mean it that way. You know, it felt unsubstantial. There wasn't growth. I didn't feel a change in any of the characters, especially Bond. Yeah. So it just it did um, not again, work. And yeah, and like I said, I think that might be the big flaw with him is that if he's if he just is coasting as like regular James Bond, it's not engaging. If he's nope. developed, if like if you're developing him, then it's mm-hmm. then it's like then he's interesting. So he, that might it, be like a you know. Daniel Craig did a fine base performance, but it was not a dynamic one. Yeah, and I'm, so it didn't I, suck me in. I don't know if I'd even give him that much credit. I just, like, it felt, I don't know, like, you know, James Bond is always supposed to be sort of charming and sly in that sort of, like, wow, you're you're like a jerk sort of way. Mm-hmm. But, like, it didn't feel it here. I don't know. Something about it. Maybe maybe the fact that Craig is tired of playing Bond sort of came out in his performance because, like, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. I will say, there's one interesting element about the Bond character they touched upon very briefly, and that's, like, what are you going to do after? Like, yes, what's, we'll, what else is there to life than being, you know, all these missions? And that, that one scene with uh, Leo Sedo's character uh, when they're having dinner, hmm. not a great scene. But at least it sort of starts digging a little bit. But we never get it. It just, we just, we, we have all these other things that are distracting us from it. And if the movie took that idea, maybe made it a motif throughout the whole movie as sort of a really strong character arc... Maybe it, that could have worked. <clears throat> uh, Larry, um, isn't the reason why we fight the fight so we can win the fight and go home? It's a snap wood. Every time someone tries to win a war before it starts, innocent people die. Every time. Mm. We're gonna we're, get we're, if you you know that. where that mo- where that uh, reference is from. We're gonna get to that specific thing when we get into the spoiler section. Trust me. Uh, yeah. Th- so th- thanks wait, for that. Is I mean, <laughs> we can go through other characters. Uh, yeah. Can we talk about Leah Sado's character a little bit? Not just Which since one I brought is her that? up. Madeline Swan. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. What? What? Who? She <laughs> is. Wow. Okay. Here's the thing. I was so happy, relatively. I, mean, I was watching. I'm still watching Spectre, so you know, take a look at yourself. <laughs> that finally, we seemed to have a relationship that wasn't romance based. They seemed to just be getting along. There was kind of a respect oh, yeah. between them, but still some disagreements over like, hey, you're a killer. I hate violence. You know, there was some disagreements and stuff. It was basic, but it was there. And I didn't get any of the sexual tension. There wasn't anything like that. And then they have an action scene. And guess what? That It cuts to them just making out and having sex. And it's just so poorly I, built I up. saw it coming. I'm like, oh, I said, I said nothing. I'm like, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. And then and it, it happened. And and like, it, and it, it wasn't like, oh, man, these guys are poorly building up to something I know was coming. I actively was praising the movie in my head for doing the opposite of what it ended up doing. That is how terribly managed that relationship is. And that kind of soils the character because, unfortunately, that's kind of the extent of that character's purpose in the yeah. plot. Unfortunately. This, this movie does not treat its Bond girl very well. It doesn't. And, and it, well, I mean, it's the, too The only time they have is – yeah. The only time they have is in Casino well, Royale, so – well, I mean, I guess in in Skyfall, it was pretty. M was pretty. M was so that was basically cool. the Bond girl in like the non Bond girl sort of way. Whatever. Um, 
Seto's a fine the bond, actress. The Bond matriarch, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> matriarch, remember that? Remember that oh, movie yeah. we made? That was um, an old school uh, throwback for you listeners yeah. at home. Matriarch. <laughs> um, yeah, Seto's a fine actress. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like her, and she did yeah. her best. There were some moments, like, I... I got what she was doing, but the plot didn't do anything with her. It's not her fault, and I just they just mismanaged that character, and the yeah. relationship did not work. Again, I God actively knows, thought it was. God knows she can't defend herself or anything. She can't be written to do anything like powerful. She has to be the damsel. She has to be like hit down with yeah. one shot. Yeah, to say oh I can I can I can use this gun, and then she gets knocked down once. I mean, hey, yep. realistic, but Bond didn't get knocked out. Yeah, no. I mean, look, just, if Dave Bautista hit us in the head, we would go down a single hit. Yeah, yeah, Realistic. But you know yeah. This is but not in the context of movies. Of, exactly. In the context of this movie, it was kind of insulting. Yeah, I just I felt that the character there was like there was potential there, uh, but once once they just started you know making love, I was like, all right, well we're done here. We're this character's potential is done. You yeah. know, like we. And I'd also like I to see. make another point to um, Mrs. Bellucci, who uh, plays the older woman. Who people were getting like kind of excited about. I was like, oh yeah, man, an older finally, Bond girl. Age of, age yeah, of look at all the two interest. minutes she was in the movie. Yeah, exactly. I know. She was in she there for two like minutes. Two... And not only was she in it for like two minutes, they pulled a West Side story. Like or a pseudo West Side story. Where, hey, I killed somebody who was super close to you. Let's make out. You know, like yeah. it's I hate. Let me when hold you against your that. will for a second, and then you'll become attracted yeah, to me. Exactly. I that? hate it. The worst I of the bond like listen, James Bond like I think when Daniel Craig in the news recently said that James Bond is a misogynist, I think he was thinking of that specific moment when he was saying yeah. that. He's right. Okay, he's right. But he's, oh, he's but not, absolutely right. He, not an active, like violent one. That was right. I felt so no, out he's, of character. It's passive. It's look it's passive everyday sexism. It's just yeah, it's like and it's not an admirable quality, and I wish no, the movies not at would all. point out that it's not an admirable quality. More, it's fine to keep it as part of the character as long as you make a point of saying, "Hey, that's dumb." But yeah. in this yeah. case, it just felt so out of character, and that made it even worse than if it was just awkward in general. It was it was a character that shouldn't be doing f- that. Wait, yeah, I just yeah. I, d- I would like to say though that that's the kind of stuff that like we see parodies of, and like yeah. we make fun of, and like yeah. the fact that. Mendes and the four screenwriters, the four screenwriters who yeah. wrote this film, wrote that scene and it actually got by. Like I mean, this was like World you know, written by four <clears throat> Yeah, well, Star Wars is three, so can we not can we not make right, statements? Because right. I'm yeah. really scared. <laughs> no, don't be, don't be. I'm not um, actually. Uh, so, uh, what about Christoph Waltz? We, we, oh, well, let's to not go into too so, much. Okay, okay. Not can, too much terror, you know, spoiler territory. There's some stuff we can talk. Yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me paint this a picture for you guys. Let me blame a bit. Do you remember when Christoph Waltz was announced to be the next Bond villain? Do you remember? Oh yeah. How hype everyone yeah. was. Remember how he was crazy born was? to this play was a Bond an villain. This was an Oscar-winning, hugely talented man lending his talents to the James Bond franchise. This was a huge, awesome thing. You watch the movie, and he is given the deli- he is given the material. Of one of the most stereotypical Bond villains that has ever been on camera. Yep. I am saying that I am telling you, Christoph Waltz's talent is completely, utterly, indisputably wasted. It is. It's Again, one of the big crimes this movie does. Yep. He's great, but he was given just this totally flat character. What are you going to do? Yeah. Nothing, mm-hmm. and that's what he did. He couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, I think my friend put it best. Uh, my roommate, who's uh, who also saw this movie, and was not uh, happy with it. Uh, he put it best when he was like, "Christoph Waltz was born to play a Bond villain," and like that was sort of how we all went into it. And it's like he and you know what? Let's be fair, Waltz. You do a fine job here. Like your your acting is fine he's here. Fine, you're but really the stuff trying. He's given to say. Yeah. You're really trying, but well, you're given such a lousy, lousy villain with such a lousy motivation. Something we, again, something we would parody. Look, the kind of motivation. Cr- Christoph huh. Waltz was born to play a Bond villain. That doesn't mean we wanted him to play a Bond villain. Get more specific than that. Give us an actual defined we character. We want him to play the Bond villain. Just, just, I guess it's just a better way of putting it. He plays, it's it, it, like on the poster it could be, and, and Christ- with Christoph Waltz as a Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. True. Some European sound a name. Pfft. And like it's even more it's just more disappointing coming off of Bardem's wonderful performance. Yes, which as was a Silva. bit you know, 
Not love it or hate it, but I loved that oh, performance. Oh, I loved it. I loved his performance as Silva. It was one of the highlights of that film for me. Uh, so and, come after, come off that, and Javier Bardem, also Academy Award high caliber actor. Yep. that's what he did with a Bond villain. He felt like a Bond villain, but he was it was unique and very memorable. And then Christoph Waltz was not. And can I just say they really miscalculated his presence? Did anyone else yeah. just shift uncomfortably in their seats during Wait, that meeting mean? scene? Like, here's what I mean. Oh, remember the sequence where the people were talking at the table that he's sitting. You know, the Spectre meeting. They say the line. There's like a 10, like 15 second pause. Someone walks up to him, walks back, 10 second pause. He responds with like two words. What was that? Yeah. I, it was the, awful is what that was. Yeah, Were I'm you like trying the only to give him weight? Were like you trying to scene. be like, how mysterious he takes literally forever to say anything? It was, it was terrible. That didn't yep. build anticipation. I was just sitting there in the audience. The theater was dead silent. The scene was dead mm-hmm. silent. We were just staring at this unmoving shot of Christoph Waltz in the shadows and watched some unnamed guy talk to him for a second. And then he said a word or two. And we were supposed to go, wow, that's someone I fear. No, I didn't. I didn't. It felt clumsy, awkward, and just laughably miscalculated. Yeah, I will say the editing of that scene. I seem to be the only person besides you who thinks that scene was just poorly handled. I think the editing is far too slow. The pacing that is so literally like, I mean, I'll be honest. It got me, you know, in the beginning because I was looking forward to this scene. It was a big scene. Like in the beginning, you know, like interesting use of shadows. I like sort of the the eerie vibe we get from all these random people everywhere. It's like a good location you know, whatever. But then we get these like 15 minute zoom ins. Yeah. Of Christoph Waltz in the shadows, I'm like, guys, you gotta, you gotta do something. There needs yeah. to be like, there needs to be glue <laughs> that holds these <laughs> these shots together, and they just it just wasn't there. It was a bunch of silent shots, and it really, it was really weird yeah. <laughs> watching it in theaters. Wow. Yeah. Um, but I I just I feel bad because I I think Christoph Waltz does fine given the material that he's that he has, and like you can tell he can just get so much weirder. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, he gets kind of weird, but, like, he can get so much deeper. But, oh, well, sadly, uh, he's out of the game. Um, quick little – I don't know the actor's name. I would like to quickly touch upon the guy who plays, like, the MI5. Um, he was Moriarty in Sherlock. Oh. Yeah. Um, and I I, he's, I love that him as an actor. I think he does fine here. I think just a shout-out for him would be nice. No, I don't think he – like, really here's talented. the problem. I can't get too much of spoilers. I think that whole subplot was, was painfully underdeveloped. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you, look, it was, it was Fiennes, so out of place too. Ray Fiennes so is a treasure that no one else seems to acknowledge as a treasure. And yet he was – he's M. OK, he's M. And spoilers for Skyfall. When he became M at the end of Skyfall, I'm like, awesome. Look, I love Judy Dench's M. But it, at least we get Ray Fiennes as M. Like, that's great. And then he was given this totally pointless, uninteresting subplot. He didn't do anything interesting. Q didn't do anything interesting, really. It just – that whole subplot disappointed me. It yeah. Just, it you was guys so, agree? Yeah, it was so Much. obvious, too, the way yeah. it integrated into everything else. Yeah, it was it really was, obvious. Again, well, yeah. I mean – Technical spoilers, Again, so we'll wait. Well, we're gonna hit spoilers really soon because there's not much else we can talk yeah, about. Yeah, do you guys? Have, what is there? Um, I just want to. I just want to bring up that everyone that the rest of the cast, you know, um, Naomi Harris, the guy who plays Q. I don't know his name. Ben Winch- 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 Winchaw. Winchaw, yeah. Uh, they're all fine actors, and I think Ray Fiennes has arguably one of the best lines of this whole film. Uh, towards the end, uh, in the confrontation, you know, with uh, Moriarty. I'm just going to call him that because that's <laughs> that's his best role. Uh, you know, with the gun. Uh, honestly, can't remember. That's okay, not a good I'll sign. say it, I'll say it in the spoiler section then. Um, yeah, but, we'll get that. Uh, it's just it's a subplot that feels so cliche, and so by the book. You know, can, can I just use that as a transition really quick? Do you mind? Absolutely, go ahead. What is this movie trying to say? Nothing. I don't know what it's trying. No, 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 no. It's definitely trying. It fails. That's what does it say? Nothing, but it tries. Like I think this is one of the way where it tries. It, there's like this subplot of like, te- you know, technology overcoming intelligence. You know, the intelligence sector. Like, what, what? What? What's your point that we want legitimate sociopaths like James Bond running around having sex and murdering at will? <laughs> is that your argument? And those people don't even exist. 
Like your argument is we need these completely fictitious, but if we're, if they were in the real world, horrible people, we need well, them. Well, I mean, there's that line that I think uh, I don't think it's really much of a spoiler, but I think this line is just really good. Ray finds this line where it's like you know, the, having a license to kill also gives you the choice to not kill. Yes, or something and like that. That, that does was a great come line. back at the end, but mm-hmm. that is yep. not that is weak. It was mentioned once at the well, beginning, it's a good and it line. came in at the end. That was a weak theme. That was not a good theme. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Let me put it this way. It's a great line, first yes. of all. Um, but develop it's, that. It's an interesting theme. Like, on paper, yeah. the idea of James Bond as a human being is a great idea. Because right. it's, it's a, something it's, that we've never really seen besides Because Skyfall. that's kind of the whole point. Bond is supposed to be kind of this inhuman spy suave machine. But what if you make the argument that you need – that he does have – he is a human being. He does have humanity, and that's what that does make him better than these machines that have mm-hmm. none. Explore but, that. Nope. nope. Shot in the arm. Dead. We are, we're too busy worrying about uh, Madeline Swan and crashing just, planes into log cabins. That could have been a good point. Wow, I just came up with that, by the way. Like, as soon as you said it, I'm like, wow, that actually could have been a good theme. It could have highlighted that Bond and does have only, some humanity. And that's not only the uh, the good-ish idea brought up there's I, again i want to bring that other thing that i mentioned before the idea of what is james bond going to do what is james bond's purpose in life outside of killing people and having sex with women you know and it's like and i think that madeline swan as a character could have really done a good job supporting that finally maybe james bond becomes infatuated with a woman because he respects her and right. like, and I mean, there's Vesper from Casino Royale, which was a whole other subplot, and a much better um, character, but. a much better character, arguably, and a great arc just in general. But yeah. that was in the past. We have to deal with, you know, what's what's now. You know, what's in so these here's movies the problem. Now. That's a great way to think of it. The question raised is, what does James Bond do if he's not having sex with women and killing people? He's <laughs> ruined when the side character starts is becomes one of the women he's having sex with and becomes an accomplice to his his killing of people. She just joins up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it totally removes the dynamic, and we'll, okay, oh we'll talk god. about the ending. And that's why that falls. Oh my so god! Flat. I just thought about this. What if, like, there was some con- connection with his relationship with Vesper to the, the relationship between this character? That would have been such a, a way better, like, to integrate the movies together. Sorry, yeah. Just an we idea can get to spoilers until they tried to do that. Yeah, but, but uh, Max, uh, tell us what you were about to say. Can we just get to spoiler talk? I really yeah. yeah want okay, to fine. Touch let's on let's this. talk. Let's let's put up the red tape. This is spoiler territory, and so, okay. we've got some stuff okay. to say. Our thoughts are pretty clear. So, we didn't like it. No. <laughs> now you can now. So don't see it. But if you want to keep listening any, anyway, you're warned. Spoilers. Yeah. Only for hardcore Bond fans, and even not even like that much of a praise, even on that level. <laughs> God. We're about to get into that though. If you're a hardcore okay. Bond fan, you've already seen this. You might not like what I'm about to say. Okay. So. so here we go. Spoiler red tape starts <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. now. So I posed a question at the beginning of this video, uh, at the beginning of this podcast. I asked, can someone explain to me what happened here? And I sort of explain myself as I address the question mm-hmm. and as I address it a second time to make this even more complicated. Here's what happened. Right after I walked out of the movie, it was going over all the weird stuff. A buddy of mine who's a huge James Bond fan he tells me that MGM acquired the rights to Spectre, an organization that has been a part of James Bond lore since the 60s, and its leader, whose name I cannot remember. Blofeld. Blofeld. Yeah. Blofeld. That's By the way, Blofeld. can I just quickly note, established franchises, stop trying to hide, hide this. We knew Benedict Cumberbatch was Khan. We knew Christoph Waltz was Blofeld. Stop pretending like it's a twist. It's now, so obvious. Yeah. Here's the thing. The minute they got the rights, this may have been the big thing that sank it. They wanted to appease James Bond fans who were seeing, oh man, look, M and Moneypenny are back. Here's what happened. They, they got the right to this character who, like, has become synonymous with the whole cat thing and the whole, like, evil, you know. Literally, literally what Dr. Evil is based on in the Austin Power movies. Is yeah, perfect. like, that, yep. yeah. So, this is pretty much why, just because you can do something, you don't, it doesn't mean you should. I think maybe I, I'm holding out for Mendes because I really think he's a great director and a great storyteller. I yeah. believe he was going to do a completely different thing, and then MGM got the rights, and he's like, no, you do this. And he's like, oh, all right, whatever. I guess I'll just deal with this now. Because what Spectre does that is so repulsive and is so indignant of the, of the age of filmmaking that we live in right now mm-hmm. is that – as I'm just going to sound out what a lot of critics have been, has been saying, 
Spectre is trying its very best to be a Marvel movie. Yep. It is the worst Marvel movie ever made. It's terrible. It, 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 it goes out of its way to trivialize the previous movies. Yes, that is like the biggest crime. By which I mean, if, you're, if you don't care and you're just listening to spoilers, Spectre is actually an organization that apparently involved all the previous villains from the Daniel Craig saga. All of them. And by which I mean they were all connected to this one group because hashtag it's all connected, don't you know? <laughs> so basically, they are trying – yeah, as Sean has said, they are trivializing and basically ruining the point of all these other characters and, and all these other things. Because God knows that we can't have a franchise that isn't completely connected. God knows everything has to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, here's right? the thing. It doesn't have to If you gave us an awesome motive – and you showed stuff that, that we would look back and go, wow, that actually was part of it the whole time. Like if this was planned and set up huh. and we're like, dang, <laughs> dang, that was well done. How come we didn't see that? That, you know, it was clearly Spectre the whole time. And like it doesn't trivialize, it just adds meaning. I'm fine with this. I'm fine with Spectre being there. I'm fine with Christoph Waltz being the author to all your pain. I'm fine with that. <laughs> all your pain. The all problem your pain. <laughs> is that his motive is so Dirt simple. So terrible. I wanted so daddy cliche. to love me. He loved you, James. Seen I wanted daddy, daddy to love issues. me. Oh, my God. It's like, if I could... let me. I want to describe this in a way that I was thinking about it when I was walking out of this movie. Um, Spectre is built on a flimsy foundation that's built on an even flimsier foundation. <laughs> yeah. And what I mean by that is, like, it tries to connect Spectre to all of these films. And the whole motivation behind Spectre is so awfully cliche overdone, simplistic, underdeveloped, so hackneyed, and so just squeezed in. It did not feel natural that this was no. the motive at all. There was, no. n- like, oh my god. I just if, Do you mind if I just say some things for a second? Go for it. Okay. No, you can't um, say some things, Larry. This okay. is against regular. Max, they're my opinions. Give them back. <laughs> I'm kidding, all right? right? Um, yeah, Larry, come on. Okay. I need to preface this. My least favorite film of the year last year was Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I hate to bring this (laughs) film up again, but I have to because there's a point. One of the biggest reasons I hated that movie was because it tried to do so much in so little of time. And it was so clearly a cash grab at what Marvel was doing with their cinematic universe. So Spider-Man said, let's throw three villains in and see if we can try to build up a whole Sinister Six thing. And it failed. That's why Marvel, thank God, is making a Spider-Man movie right now. And so Uh he's hopefully... actually. What? No, go, finish your point, and I'll get back to that. Okay. Well, I mean, Sony also has part of the rights, but if no, Marvel was smart, not they're not going to okay. let them yeah. touch any of it. Um, this. Oh my God, Spectre tries doing this, but even worse. Like in a, in a way that's so much lazier. It tries to explain three movies, or technically like four movies, with one movie, and it boggles my mind at how idiotic. It all just plays out. Because what? this is such a shallow villain. It's and the so fact that, shallow. Like, these other three villains, like, even the Quantum of Solace guy I found more enjoyable. I can't well, even remember his name. The performance was better, too. What? The performance was better, too. Yeah, like, all of the, are you seriously saying that all these villains with these different backgrounds, like Lashif's money thing and, you know, uh, the great backstory, honestly, of Silva – from Skyfall, that like he felt betrayed by the organization that treated mm-hmm. him like an expendable thing, and it played a great contrast to M's legitimate uh, connection to Bond. Like that was really clever and all that. You mean to tell me that actually this guy from Bond's past that was jealous of Daddy's attention set up Silver? Like, what are you doing? You just ruined the legitimate stakes and background of your good villains to serve a crappy villain. It, it was a terrible choice. Like, this is just on paper yeah. a god awful yeah. choice. Yeah. This is not it, the execution, like, wow, the performance was too hammy. Or that, no, this was just a terrible decision. You had three movies, two, you had two movies that people liked, one that people are kind of mixed on, and now you do this. You, you, you ruined it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, and you know, we, we've talked about the franchise age on the podcast this, okay, before. Can I, can I say it? Can I say it, please? Yes, please? yes, yes. This is the darkest timeline of the franchise age. Yes, okay, that I would agree with that. Like, Max, I think, I don't know if it was you or Sean, but, like, somebody brought up, like, when the franchise age is going to, like, <laughs> I think like that was fall. Me, I, I, was that you? The okay. you, know, you, you know what? You know what, Sean? You know what, Sean? I finally see it now. Uh, the first I horseman know. of the apocalypse, I, and his name is Spectre. 
On it, no, it's not. No, I'm not talking no, about. No, its first name was Fantastic Four. Its second name is the second one is. Oh Spectre. no, its first name was Amazing Spider-Man Two. The second was Fantastic Four. And the oh third man, we're sorry, sorry this is an overlong joke. Three three my guys. point, my point being is, Sean, I finally get it. You know why the franchise age is gonna die? Because movie producers and directors think that they can just take these shortcuts to create these yeah. depth, full these universes full of depth and character. And why does Sam Mendy, somebody who I honestly think is a fantastic filmmaker, why did he, or, or why did MGM, why did they do it? It's just like, if, if franchises keep doing this, we're going to we're gonna get tired of it. We're going to get terrible cinematic universes. Look, it's this, like, this is oh Steve Buscemi God. in 30 Rock, you know, undercover in the high school, going up with his skateboard and backwards hat going, hello there, fellow youths. Oh, yeah. Don't try to do this. You can't build this type of universe. It's, it's too late. You're not doing yeah. it well. You don't know what you're doing. You're at the, you're at the kid's table, okay? <laughs> Let that's the grown-ups build think about it. their universes. And you yeah, know see, the worst thing? You, okay. Like, sh- sh- I'm sorry, but I just, I, this is another thing I want to bring up. Sean, you mentioned it earlier. This could have been a great idea. The, it's a it's a very it's a brilliant. Yes, now, I, I, people say that like the, these James Bond films are like reboots, uh, not prequels. Supposedly reboots. I don't know. It's it's there's theories going around. But like if we had all these movies and throughout all these movies there were these subtle little scenes or implications that Christoph Waltz's character is you know behind the scenes pulling the strings the whole time. This could have been incredible. You know what's funny? But I'm no. glad you bring that up. Because you know what occurred to me just earlier today? I'm glad we took a while to record this because it just occurred to me. What you were just saying, Larry, is this could work if that mysterious presence was an unexplained yet present force throughout mm-hmm. the previous three movies. Mm-hmm. There was such a force. There was a character that was there that was pulling the strings that was relatively unnamed. And that was Mr. White. Mr. White is my favorite character of the new Bond films, it, not as a character, but as a role. He plays this very intriguing, never explained proxy to some organization that is yet to, that is yet to be revealed, even in Spectre. He works with Spectre, but we still don't know if that's his sole writer. How amazing would it have been if he was Blofeld? This whole time, Casino Royale, who was that guy that saved Bond by shooting Le Chief? Turned out to be Blofeld. Who was it that took the money after Vesper died? Turned out to be Blofeld. Quantum Solace, who was the one meeting with this company to get the oil in the desert? Turns out to be Blofeld. That he was there. He I don't remember this one. character. He was the I one that got character. Vesper killed. He was the author of all his pain. You didn't have to force this. You morons. <laughs> it just it hit me in the face earlier today because their intentions were already done for them. They already had this character that was responsible. And in this movie, we're in spoilers, they just kill him. Yep. And he had a great line, you're a kite dancing a hurricane, Mr. Bond. And then he kills himself. That's what it did. What were you doing? You had him. You had your Blofeld. That would have actually gotten people. Oh, that character! Yeah. He shoots oh. Sheep. He was the reason yes. that Sheep was so scared about getting the money. He was in Quantum. He was the connection to the mm-hmm. villain and the, you know, whatever his organization was. And I don't think he even worked for Spectre. They were, he was still talking as if he was just related to Spectre. So he, there's still an organization we don't know about as far as I'm concerned in terms of the James Bond canon, the new one. Why couldn't that happen, Spectre? Christoph Waltz could have been a dummy. And then Mr. White comes out and says, yeah, of course it's me. Remember, I'm everywhere you go, James. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> like, that's the thing. They show Mr. White in the trailer. And it's like, he's everywhere. You literally are Mr. White. You've been in all three movies pl- driving the plot. It was so infuriating when I realized that. I'm sorry if that was a tangent, but I, I no, love the Mr. Oh White God, character thank you. Thank and the you role for- he played. Thank you for helping me realize that. I it was like just, that's <laughs> it was right wow. there. Oh, Don't wow. force in a author to all your pain when you do have a character that did that because it's undeniable. He was he's the reason Vesper is dead, and that's a huge mm-hmm. part of Bond's yep. pain. He's the reason that he kind of failed to actually get closure in Quantum of Solace. It's not really that much of a happy ending, mm. and I, he had some time to, sil- to tie to Silva, but I cannot remember. And that's the reason M is dead. All these bad things were Mister White. And you can give him that great name, the Pale King. That was awesome, but yep. he great should have name. been Blofeld. He should have been head of Spectre. It was already done for you. It's like you did have this universe, but you decided to hammer in a different one. Um, <sighs> guys, so uh, MGM got the rights to a very, very popular part 
of its most popular franchise's mythos and just put it in there. That doesn't um, that doesn't sound familiar to you guys, is it? Uh, what well, we've seen it before, Spider Man. Yeah, exactly. I meant I, I literally what? brought no, that no, up. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the Amazing Spider Man. Yeah, I'm no, I know Marvel where Studios. you're going. I know where you're going. And, and look, concerned. I don't want to be cynical, but this is the kind of stuff that can happen from stuff like this. And as from concerned as I franchise am, stuff. and as concerned as I am that the MCU might have been altered too much with the inclusion of a Spider-Man movie, and it might shift its focus too much from what was originally planned, the fact remains that they have they said that they did have a backup plan in place if they were able to get the rise of Spider-Man this whole time, and that's what they're enacting now. So I don't think yeah. it really applies here because they never expected to get Blofeld and Spectre when they make a Surreal, Quantum of Solace, and probably even Skyfall. Right? Hmm. So this right, was right, unplanned. Sense. I think – I do believe Marvel Kevin Feige when he says we know what to do with Spider-Man. We just had a different yeah. plan in case we couldn't as, get him. As J.K. Rowling and Kevin Feige proves, blockbuster franchise planning will lead to great stories. Yeah, and I don't understand why people just – aren't realizing that i mean they're realizing it but they're like okay we're gonna do it in one movie one movie it it doesn't work guys it doesn't work can we move on to really quickly to another thing yeah so yeah the the arc of bond because this is another thing that i think is doing terrible franchise building because his end point is doesn't kill blofeld like learns how i don't have to be this way with no build up to that and and swaggers off with his new lady love and Victoria say happy. Except here's the problem. Guess what happens if they do a sequel? She's gonna die. Oh, probably. They're and not gonna do it. And then we'll just be right if back Craig... where we started with the stupid movie in the first place. And so you're gonna trivialize your own trivializing movie. We're gonna double trivialize <sighs> it, okay? <laughs> it's you know, just, and like I don't even looking, know if Craig's gonna forward. do a fifth. Yeah. Is Craig gonna do a fifth? Maybe I hope he not. doesn't do it's a like fifth. It's like Spectre's like a ticking time bomb for the end of this dang franchise. Exactly. Can we get Idris Elba? Where is Idris Elba? I've been waiting for him to be Bond <laughs> yeah, for like dare five put Tom years. Hardy in there. You put Idris Elba in there, or get him. Put it to a woman. Why? Get an un- yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. I feel like you can do something similar, but you James know, Bond himself's a bit iconic. Yeah, that feels like one of those roles that I don't know if the gender swap is really actually a good idea. Mm-hmm. Though you it know, would Sean, be amusing. Sean, you know that AV Club it. article? You remember that AV Club article that you yeah. linked? Oh, and so, I, okay. I, I People read should it. look that up. I loved that it. is an amazing article. It's, a, it's an know, amazing can we link article. That? Max, do you know what we're talking about? No. The AV Club oh. went through, what was it, like 36 bonds? Is it, was no, that, it, was, it was like it above was less. 30 or something. Was it, I thought it was more. No, okay. it, was, it was less. It was like 17. Oh, okay. But, it was, was but every, every idea was gold. Yeah, so basically every what, what AV one. Club did, and they're great over there. We're not, this isn't sponsored, though I wish it was. Uh, they <laughs> made an article where they listed out, I guess, 17 actor choices for Bond and what kind of Bond they should be used as. Hmm. So every Bond had a different twist. And like like the Everyman Bond, the this Bond. The, and it was really well written. So could you include a link in the description, Larry? I will do my best. Yeah, it's yes. really good. And so, Yeah. Daniel Craig should probably end because, again, yeah, looking forward, stop. this kind of screwed over the f- the rest of the franchise too. Oh it trivialized God. the past of the franchise and screwed over the future, and it wasn't a good movie in it itself. Wasn't good. What What are you doing? What did Spectre yeah. do that was positive? Um, uh, do we have anything else to say? No, that ending was was kind of my last thing. And okay. my Mr. Yeah, White that's, that's, I mean, we'll just be going in circles if we continue. But yeah, know I this, did. Spectre. Uh. What you did. There are worse movies I saw this year than you. Jurassic World. What you did was honestly more objectionable than what they did. Fantastic yeah. Four, yeah. Pixels. You know what? Look, Fantastic Four is a worse movie. They didn't try what you movie. tried. They didn't try to destroy other movies in the process. Yeah. No, and you know what? Really, let's let's be let's be pretty frank here. Pixels and Fantastic Four. We knew. I mean, I, I hate to bring this up, but like. You knew from the minute they started they weren't going to be, you know, golden. You know, Let's not and like do I'm not this. talking Let's about not ex- this. I'm not talking about expectations, but I'm just I'm just being honest. All right, the movie itself is just they're bad as a whole. the The biggest problem I have with Spectre really is that I like some parts of it. I wish that I could just not like this movie and not have to like remind myself to dig deep into my opinions to find the things that I like that I genuinely do like. But, like, oh, my God. Despite the fact that Pixels and Fantastic Four are just, like, worse movies, this is one of my least favorite films of the year. Yeah. In just what it did and how 
badly it did it and how many opportunities there were not to do it. It upsets me more than Pixels of Fantastic Four because guess what? Those movies sucked. Okay, Spectre sucked, but it drug down other movies with it. Yeah. It didn't go down quietly. It did not go quiet into that good night or that dark, <sighs> whatever that poem is. I'm so angry I can't even reference Interstellar anymore. <laughs> At least we can still cherish the quality of the other two good Bond movies with Daniel Craig. And hey, Quantum Solace is solid. I'm actually one of the people that find it pretty solid. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I thought it was okay. Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> it makes Spectre look, I mean, like Spectre makes Quantum of Solace look like, I don't know, a legitimate entry in the Bond series. Mm. Uh, I think we're done. I'm done. Yeah, we're done. Uh, for, for average. Yeah. You know, not not no, good. You know, no, I'm, I'm angry. 3.5. I'm going to stick with 3.5. 3.5. So wait, Max is a 4.5, uh, right? No, I was a 4.5. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it down to 3.5. I have no problem with Ooh. that. Ooh, that was quite the jump. So I okay. guess the average now is... 3.6 or whatever because it's 2, 3.5. Yeah. It's bad. That's the hey, point. I didn't do Forget this, the score. It's a podcast. bad movie. I didn't do this podcast to do math. Don't make me do this. Yeah, it's the bad average movie. of 11, Please don't 11 see divided it. by 3. Max, how was the Peanuts movie? I didn't actually okay. get a chance to see it yet. Um, oh, yeah. I want to no, see the Peanuts movie. I've been busy. But I'm going to go see like it this weekend. That's like 80% of your personality. 20% Muppets. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I thought you were jump yeah, out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, wow. I, that's debatable. I will yeah, say, say this. That in good sense. Um, I will say this about Spectre. I'd... Oh, the whole thing. Okay, real quick. So, C... It, it, right? The, that guy who turned out to be a villain, right? Oh, Spectre, right. Spectre, when it's like going out and you see just the C is remaining in the title. That's why I thought, uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's oh, yeah. where that came from. And the line, the line is like, um, isn't that what M stands for? Moron. Mm-hmm. And then Ray Fiennes goes, I guess that's what's, and then he tries to shoot him, but then there's no more bullets in it. And then, and then Ray Fiennes goes, I guess that's what C stands for. Careless. And I was like, oh. The thing is, I thought it was hinting to something else. <clears throat> yeah, I thought he yeah, was going to say it. I actually thought so too. Yeah, but then like dirty minds. Um, I'm like, okay, okay. I, I so yeah, hear. just let's wrap this up. Let, let's get out of here. Let me go see a good movie. Yeah, up uh, next, so, uh, hopefully, a good movie. The Hunger yes. Games: Walking J Part Two. Yes, that's the next movie. Which again, we're covering Catching Fire, I absolutely love, and I liked Mark J Part One. So I'm hopeful that the that we're going to close out the franchise strong. So. I'm excited, yeah. and I've been burned so many times. Black Mass, Scorch Trials, Sicario, Trainwreck, Spectre. Disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Don't oh, let me down, Sean, Katniss. Sean, welcome to my world. Welcome to my entire year. And uh, guys, basically. let's be honest. I will accept all the burns, all the disappointments, all the mediocrity if, if my heart just soars at Star Wars. Yeah, but that being kinda. said, come on. Let's get a good Hunger Games movie to close it out. Yeah, let's, let's get a, no, let's get an do... easy one. Uh, Let's just hope they don't do anything stupid. Yeah. Go see the Peanuts movie. I hear it's good. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty I'm it's a safe bet it's gonna be better than Spectre. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see it at th- around Thanksgiving time with my family. So cool. that'll be a good time. Anyway, we're done here. this has been the most happy episode of Rule Thirds in a long time. Your question is okay, we'll we'll make it double sided. If you've seen Spectre, what is, in your opinion, the worst part about Spectre? Your least favorite aspect of it? Because that seems to be the kind of the kind of path ooh, we're on. Ooh, sorry, I have a really fun question. Can I, can okay. I say it? Can I mind? Okay, yeah, sure. Here's my question. Here's the challenge. I want you to find a franchise that you like and tell us a way to ruin it, like Spectre did with its previous films. I want you to mm. find a franchise and explain to us what twist you would do that actively ruins the previous movies. Get creative, get terrible. It should be fun. <laughs> yes, and then for those of you who haven't seen Spectre and you, you know you don't agree with that, who do you want to play Bond? Uh, that's solid. Uh, easy but, uh, question. There's so many options. Yeah. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Larry. And my name is Sean. And my name is Max. And uh, hopefully we will see you guys next time on the next episode of Rule Thirds. Hear us later.